Welcome. Welcome to Neurotic News. Are you going to say something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, I was just going to say, um, we were talking about something before. <laughs> <laughs> what were we talking about? Um, wellness. Oh, yeah. right. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah, we do talk about wellness every day. Um, wellness, yeah. How well, like meth heads who's quit meth <laughs> will often channel it into wellness or that's true. ceramics yeah. or whatever. I do think it is interesting that um, I've found, I don't know, I've found that drug addicts, like meth particularly, I know a few, there's a comedy yeah. promoter as well, yeah. and they're like, they were former meth addicts and when they when they're, when they quit, they put the same meth energy into the next thing they do. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, it's like they have a certain energy that's got to, it's either going to go into, into meth or finance or ceramics or whatever yeah pottery yeah yeah i've got a mate of mine that was a meth addict and he he uh he got he got he we, we, he channeled that into 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 pottery the it, meth the meth it, energy it, i guess energy cannot be created or destroyed like within <laughs> that person it maintains a certain yeah homeostatic energy it's not like you're just going to be like i've got no energy now and i'm off meth no it's but it fascinates me because the aggressive manic energy doesn't subside yeah so it's like the energy's been created by meth and then it just goes into you know like it used to be strangling your fucking dude for his wallet yeah yeah, yeah. on meth and now it's like holding the pot yeah i see him like he's just got just thousands of pots pot. yeah, yeah spinning the pot with the same yeah man intensity yeah he gives me massages and shit he's really? like how you going man he's like so energetic he's like fucking yeah dude you want some food like he's just like yeah it's the same well, I think some of the healthiest people on the world in the world are former meth heads, because they channeled it into wellness. Right. So now the same yeah obsession is now into instead a new of obsession. using scales to weigh, weigh crystal rock, they use it to weigh macros or crystals or crystals, healing crystals. Yeah, it's from crystal meth to crystals. Yeah, to healing to to Bondi. Mm. I reckon a lot of meth addicts would be into crystals, crystal meth, and just the crystal under their pillow and stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. Does that seem like an overlap to you? I think there's a, a it's a lateral move. Yeah, it's it's Tarzan from mm. from crystal meth to a healing Himalayan salt rock crystal. Mm. You know, like those <laughs> yeah. slabs of yeah, yeah, they like orange mixed, yeah. pink rock. Yeah. Um, it's funny, you know, because at Burley Heads, which is pretty much pristine real estate on the Gold Coast on beachfront. The main spot there, which is normally occupied by a cafe, went out of business and got bought by a crystal crystal expo. Yeah, yeah. Like there's like ice cream, crystals, and then like all these other shop fronts. Like pretty much probably some of the most prime real estate in Australia. Really beach facing in in the Gold Coast and Burley Heads. And you just go, what? Where? Who? What is going on with crystals? Who are the who are buying crystals? What's going on with that? I think they heal bipolar and stuff like that. For real? They, yeah, they they have all kinds of healing. You're not being serious though. Crystals uh, actually do stuff. Well, I think people who subscribe to that think that. It, but they're not really doing anything, right? No, no. I think just placebo. Yeah. Which, let's face it, is more efficacious than ninety percent of things on the pharmaceutical market. <laughs> <laughs> like a healing crystal probably does more than Zoloft. <laughs> If you believe it. Yeah. Mm. And you can still feel your orgasm, but have a healing <laughs> crystal as well, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah. So in a way, it's better. Yeah. So there's no negative side effects because you believe the crystals um, yeah. curing your bipolar and, and you're not on Zoloft anymore. Yeah. So you're like able to get an erection. You get funny looks like by people for being into a weird occult cult. You think it's like crystal. being into witchcraft. I, I mean, like, mm. if you're going to be getting into witchcraft, like, yeah, keep going. Like, if, it's mm. probably going to be good. Well, I don't think anything surprises anyone now into what people are into. Like, yeah, if I met I, someone, they're like, I'm into witchcraft. I'm like, yep. No, where I live, there's a lot of witchcraft shops popping up. Like, I'm serious. <laughs> like, you can, get, you can get a cauldron and I'm not... <laughs> Like th there's like potions. I'm not, what are this you is like the about, next man? level of healing. Chris I'm serious. Witchcraft is taking off in my neighborhood. <laughs> and, I, and I was against witch burning because I thought it was mm. just a thinly veiled excuse to gather. 
Right. As a community in the medieval times. Yeah, I thought that they were just wanted to hang out. But so you need invented... an excuse. So you think there was a lot of social... <laughs> Are you sure you're not projecting your social anxieties onto the medieval era? <laughs> I literally think it's like, you know, Karen's a fucking... Like, we don't like her, but also... Like, I'd also like to meet my neighbours. And you can't just be vulnerable. Well, that's and... a good combo. Yeah. You're like, fucking Karen. Let's burn her alive. Yeah. And then also we get to finally... Let's stop pretending like we're all alone. Let's hang out. Hang out. Can you imagine the bonding? Over watching someone scream just as they to, burn to death? Yeah. Just because you know how they I do. I guess it's like the modern day footy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Go, go. Yeah. It's that like same kind of primal. Yeah. You, you get rid of someone you despise, but also meet everyone. I mean, how thinly veiled is this witch stuff like back then, do you reckon? In all seriousness, though, they would have been like, fucking Karen. Fuck me, she's annoying. She's probably a witch. Yeah. <laughs> she, it wouldn't have been like I saw her riding a broomstick the other night. Yeah. You know? It probably wasn't that. It was like, <laughs> fuck, she's annoying. Like, yeah. the way she, you know? And also, like, seems to be sort of satanic chants going on there. Let's... Yeah. Yeah. Her mantra is satanic. <laughs> <laughs> um, you reckon... I wonder if they would have bought snacks or whatever to the roasting. Like oh, how, yeah. how social would it have been? Like would it have been like going to the movies to watch? I reckon it would have been like alone? an outdoor cinema. One of those outdoor. <laughs> <laughs> like a new farm where you sit out. Yeah, you get a good. What is it like movies by nightlight? Moonlight, yeah. <laughs> movies by moonlight. So they would have got a beanbag and, and a Shiraz and yeah, watch yeah. some burn <laughs> locals that annoy people. Just going to unwind with a glass of Shiraz and the burning of Karen. <laughs> I find it pairs nicely with her not... Yeah. Being alive with her cremation. <laughs> yeah, it's nothing like a good wine with someone who you hate not being alive. Yeah, it, uh, I think... Unalived. That's uh, a new internet term. Is it? I heard. Which means... Unalived. I tried to unalive. I'm unaliving. Trying to die? Mm. God, that one just... Instead mm. of suicide. Mm. Suicide's a bit weighty. Meaty. It's Meaty for you. Yeah, it's a big one. But uh, yeah, I think, you know, and then... There was a lot of intricacies to testing whether someone was a witch. Like, will they float or whatever, you know? Like, when you throw them off a cliff. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's crazy. It's, I mean, it's, it's kind of like the Turing test, but applied to witchcraft, you know? So, it's the Turing test being the test of whether a machine is sentient. Yeah, it's like that, but for witchcraft. <laughs> How so is throwing, a, throwing someone off a, off a cliff to see if they float? Well, because it's like, like the Turing test. if you fly away, you're not a robot or whatever, you know? <laughs> <laughs> right. Like if if you like throw someone off a cliff, they're going to a broomstick ah, 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 and like cackle mm. into the crow's mm. nest area. Uh, yeah. Then, you know, yeah. sort of. Yeah. Not quite well, that, it's, but like that. It's, <laughs> I wonder if that'll be a test in the future for whether someone's a robot or not. I thought not it, tossing them into an ocean, but... Because there's a lot Something of like that. people rocking around now that are saying they're autistic, but they're just quirky, you know? Right. Like they've dyed their hair purple and they're, you know, mm. shopping at Typo and stuff. And Autism's become popular. Yeah, yeah. How I does that make you feel? Well, I think, <laughs> well, it's it's cultural appropriation. But like, it, it, I think there needs to be a Turing test for that too. Mm. Like, sort of like witch burning, but... Right. Autism. Like, testing. Yeah. It's, so it's like the Turing test for autism. So you just strap them to a karaoke karaoke booth. Mm. And if they're still alive the next day, you burn them. Because that should have killed them from sensory overload. Oh, I see the connection from now. From the seizure. So, so just trying to paint the picture here. So you're tying autistic or autistic. We yeah. We don't know yet. People Nebulous to son. A, to, a, to a karaoke machine in a pub. Yeah. Where lots of people. No, like a karaoke booth. You know those booths? You just you lock right. them in there. Sorry, I'm trying to pay. Okay, so like they're in the room. booth and you and they have to sing to the and they get all the stimulation and the, all the subtitles booths. and the then noise like the the lights, the right. sound and if the next day they're like, No, that was good, you you set them alight. Right, you burn them for not be, for faking autism. Yeah, yeah. So it's a bit of a <laughs> Or well, you could just see whether the, you know, you can make them whether they get sad at the end of Titanic. Yeah, you, there's many ways. I mean, mm. but if, if they still, if they're still, if they're dead in the booth, then you've made a huge mistake. Yeah, 
and shame You've on taken you. a big risk. That happened with the witch burnings too. Yeah. Didn't they? They th threw them off and... Well, the thing was they had to sink or whatever. Yeah. I think the thing was if they floated, they were witches. Yeah. And then all of them just drowned and they were like, eh, okay, whoops. Whoops. Yeah. At least now they die knowing that they're not a witch. Then that was the kind of thing. Proper burial or whatever, like for a, a ceremony. What was your test? You said you used to say, um, uh, I know I was autistic because when I watched the Titanic, I had more empathy for the boat than the people. Yeah. Yeah. That seems like a good test. I said that I was on the fence about the Berlin Wall because, <laughs> you know, on the one hand, it liberated all these oppressed people from right. the yoke of communism, but mm -hmm. on the other hand, we lost a good wall. <laughs> I hadn't heard that one. That's awesome. <laughs> and like, I, 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 like I'm like the Greta Thunberg for infrastructure though. Like mm. just want more of it, more infrastructure. Yeah. Yeah. You like infrastructure is that like yeah. build a wall in Mexico? Not cause I hate Mexicans just want to see another wall in the world. <laughs> you know? Yeah. You're pro Trump's wall, but just for the actual infrastructure There's project. There's that small demographic that just likes walls. Yeah. Which no one represents or talks about. Yeah. Um, There's people going build the wall, but for, I just feels good to see walls like, I get it. Maybe not to that level, but I like a, a gentrification. Um, I know that's controversial to say, but I just mean like when you go into, what do we see today? Like a wool factory. There was one, what was the a refinery. refinery? I'm like, hmm, let me eat Benedict, Edge Benedict here where I know that a worker was yelled at by his boss while he was pouring molten steel into a barrel. Yeah. Or I, whatever. Into it a makes furnace. it taste better when it's haunted by the ghosts of disenfranchised workers. Exactly. Yeah. It does something to the flavor. Well, we just don't get those kinds of workers anymore. Yeah. You know, like working in the coal mine, gritty, like now they're tradies with high vis that have got heaps of money. Like Marx would be like, oh, okay, well, that's not what I expected. Well, it's, yeah, it's the opposite now. Yeah. The guy driving the crane earns more than mm. the guy wearing a suit. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, like you say, it was all fun and games till AI started taking the middle class jobs. Yeah. Now the plumbers, they're the ones that are like, yeah, well, you... They can get a machine to do the uh, invoicing and the marketing and the uh, contact client relations, but they're not going to get it, this shit out of this U pipe. Yeah, they're not going to be able to fix this float tank. Yeah. You know? Because like, <laughs> e even a doctor can be automated, mm. which is a huge drop in status. For them, yeah. To go from like complete like reputational oligarchs to just mm. serfs. Yeah. That would, that would be tough for them because you'll be able to just go to a machine, right? And you'll go, you are healthy or yeah. not. And then, then you'll have like an ophthalmologist that was the highest status you could ever have for 30 years, just all gone. Yeah. Because he's worthless now because a robot replaced him. But meanwhile, the plumber will be like, you know, an aristocrat. It kind of, it kind of <laughs> my Lord fucking. Yeah. Yeah. The guy driving the dialer hubby van. Yeah. Will be, will be like. You know, a complete overlord. Well, that'd be good for cucks, wouldn't it? People yeah. like being cuck old, a dial a hubby, and then they just come in and, and fuck your wife in front of you, and you go, "Oh, while you're on the way out, check the doorknob. It's squeaky, <laughs> sweetheart." I don't know why he's calling him sweetheart, but <laughs> it's funny because it's like, you handymen are the only people who incorporate cuckolding into their marketing. Mm. Like true, like dial who's, a hubby. Who's yeah. who's dialing a hubby? You know. Yeah. The implication is clear, right? Yeah. That he's going to come over and, and fuck do a your wife, job. yeah, yeah, and fix. That's what a hub's and husband fix does the pipe as well. He probably comes in and goes, "I'm home from work." And it's like, oh, it's a dial a hubby guy, you know, yeah. pretending and so on. Yeah, it's like, come on, sweetheart. The actual husband's hiding in a closet, looking through like a little small opening, <laughs> <laughs> like Ned Kelly's little <laughs> visor or whatever. He's got a little <laughs> open. He's like, oh, good, hire a hubby's here to fix the plumbing. He's like just watching his wife get railed. He comes out like half time with like a drinks cart, like on a plane with like refreshments <laughs> and stuff. Yeah. It's and like I made some lemonade. He does that tradey talk on the way out. Anyway, I plowed her like a field, mate. It's all done. <laughs> yeah. I can't imagine just, it, it's just an interesting marketing ploy. Dial a hubby. Because the, like even if And he looks good too. Yeah. He's, the, uh, the, for people listening in, in Australia, we have a thing called dial a hubby, which is a franchise service. It's got, it's got a, got a really rip guy. muscly guy with a spanner or a hammer or something. He's yeah. Communist looking almost. Yeah. 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 He's going to really, really yeah. fuck your wife quite hard. 
the funny thing is even if it's not cool like in getting a handyman in general the mm. emasculation is already there right so it's gonna it's gonna really appeal to cuckolds yeah because like even if you just dial up handyman there's still a bit of like is he gonna fuck my wife you know mm. because he's gonna come over and go i know what to do yeah loosen this pipe and you know they make the fun spanner. of you yeah They're like yeah you gotta turn this way yeah and they laugh and yeah yeah you'll need a bit more of a grip than that mate <laughs> that kind of stuff i remember uh, when I, this guy this guy and i was like yeah yeah, do this. And I was like, oh, he's like, why are you yawning? I'm like, it's a bit early. He's like, soft. <laughs> I'm like, thanks, man. <laughs> they're, they're the only service you can order that can are allowed to abuse you and like m belittle you. Like you go to the mechanic, it's like, yeah, mate, of course we're going to have to replace the spark plug. It's not going to, it's not going to ignite the engine. The cylinders are fucked. Yeah. And you're like, oh, sorry. There's no other service that can get away with that. Yeah. You're not going to stop my wife mechanic. Mechanic. <laughs> <laughs> is, I this guess a is this a sentence in your in your weird world where you're saying that to someone you're not going to stop my wife mechanic it sounds like something out of a 90 you're not going to stop my wife mechanic you see she's mine okay <laughs> all right buddy okay yes yeah, like, you're not going to stop my wife mechanic i, I, I go now i know why because the mechanic doesn't come to your house that's what makes it even more do you know what i mean you dial a hubby he's going to come into your house yeah it is, it is, it is, it, you're right, up. I never thought about it, but the marketing ploy of calling your company dial a hubby and you dial a number and a husband, makeshift husband comes over and does repairs, you may as well just get the real husband, come home from his accounting job at Ernest and Young and uh, <laughs> get him naked and just attach a weird rope to his cock and pull him on one of those... You know those mechanic wheels things yeah, that yeah, slide yeah. under the car and <laughs> yeah. you pull them around and go, come on, little piggy. Like yeah, a dialer yeah, yeah. hubby does that. Come on, little piggy. Couldn't you couldn't you fix it? Couldn't you fix the plumbing? Yeah. <laughs> couldn't you fix the drippy tap little like buddy? Like a medieval torture And the device. wife's like, I told you this would happen. <laughs> like she's like at you. You, did, you. you sure couldn't do it. You said we had to dial a hubby. Come on, little piggy. Like it's that level of emascula. That's the emasculation <laughs> metaphorically in my head. No, that's what's happening. Mm. Even if that doesn't happen. Mm. You know what I mean? That's what you want to happen. And then you're like, should, I, the should I send you an invoice for the, you send mm. an invoice for this? He's like, no, nah, no, nah, I'm taking you to a cash point, little piggy. Puts a leash on you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, cause you more. don't have cash cause you work at Ernst and Young. Yeah. So he walks you to the ATM. By the cock rope. <laughs> He's like, thing, we're taking yeah. you to a cash Wheel point. Him. Yeah. You little pig. Empty little... this bank account into my yeah. pocket. It's full humiliation. <laughs> um, Up to the point of payment. It's just yeah. wall to wall. Yeah. Yeah. Emasculation. She just leaves him naked in the city with a rope tied to his cock and a skateboard. <laughs> Dial a hubby. That should be the ad for it. Mm. We'll fuck your wife and fix the problem. <laughs> the problem. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I feel like the problem's going to be lasting. You know what I mean? It's like, you fuck my wife. The problem's still here. It, well, yeah, it sounds like the problem is in the relationship right. to begin with. Right, yeah. If you're dialing a hubby. Mm. Be funny if you dial a hubby and they just come over and argue with the wife and leave. <laughs> Fuck it, Elsie. I married you for twenty years. It's been the same shit. This is just, just having... my luck. Yeah, yeah. Oh, she is this... and the real husband gets to watch. Going, yeah, good. Yeah. I told you it wasn't easy. <laughs> <laughs> just like an ad. Like, yeah, yeah. Told you it wasn't easy. <laughs> dial a hubby. It's got nothing to do with mates. Don't have wives, you know. Or yeah. A campaign. <laughs> a weird government campaign. Mates don't have wives. <laughs> don't get a wife, you bloody idiot. Sponsored by the Queensland government. Like a, <laughs> That'd weird, be a weird ad. Like anti smoking. Don't get a wife. There's anti smoking. Yeah. There's every cigarette does your damage. Don't drink and drive. Don't get a wife. Don't get Fucking a wife. Fucking dickhead. <laughs> See, if, if, if someone told me Dollar Hubby's actually way better and cheaper, they fix it. But there was another one just called Generic Handyman. That was worse. I'd still get generic handyman because of the the word. The implication that you're not a real man. Yeah, Let's do, face do you it. know what I mean? That's what the implication is. You're not a real man. It's just the surface, but you still couldn't get over it. Mm. Well, I reckon in the future, dial a hubby will be what relationships are. Yeah, and you'll dial a wife, and it's like, ah, oh, fuck, Friday night in, might dial a hubby, and they just come over and pretend to be your husband for a night. Oh, you like you get to watch a movie and you have sex and drink wine and. Like basically the, like a prostitute, but a dialer relationship. Like a husband. There's a bit of an argument about what to watch or whatever. Yeah. 
Like it's, it's, a, it's an experience. Like I think everything will be experiences yeah. that we have momentarily, but we maintain our super individualistic. It, it reminds, it's like. Because a, a marriage actually inflicts on your individual freedom. Yeah. Because it's a compromise. Of course it is. You're in a serious relationship. So you've got to be like, well, I'm not going to go out to the game because we agreed to spend time together and I'm not going to do this and do that. And these things, because I want our relationship to go well. But in the yeah. future, I think everyone would be like, no, nah, I'm just going to do whatever I want. And then when I feel like it, I'll just hire a relationship. Yeah. Or, or people could actually have husbands that work for Dawa Hubby be, because they're like, yeah, I don't need your Tuesday, Thursday. You can work for Dawa Hubby. Mm. You know what I mean? Like it's like hire the, out their hubby. Well, it's like you've got, yeah, gee, they can hire you out. It's like when people drive Uber two days a week. I was going to say, what if they arrive on a, a moped? Like, man, hello, yeah. I'm here for They've got <laughs> the cube on their back for yeah. some reason. <laughs> <laughs> Brings a pad tie with him. But it's for him. He just has a menu log backpack for some reason. Yeah. Like it's not to do with this. <laughs> it's <service>. unrelated. Yeah. <laughs> but I feel like that gig economy, because the gig economy has weaponized every nook and cranny of unused thing. So if mm. it's like, well, I'm not using your Tuesday, Thursday, Gary. So why don't you go on Dial Arby and make some more money? On the side. And be a hubby for someone else. Right. Because it's like the gig economy makes you want to weaponize every nook and cranny of unused space and time. Right. I see what you mean. It's like I'll see an unused dresser drawer and I'm like, fuck, I could sublet that to a dwarf, you know? <laughs> that's the craziest. Well, you know what I mean? I'm that's not saying really that's what you'd think. An Orwellian but... version of what the gig economy could become or whatever. Well, you're like, I could sublet that dresser drawer to a dwarf for an hour. Because I'm, but then I'm going to fill it up, so they'll have to leave. But you, you know. think that's what late capitalism will be like, where it's like, well, I've got an hour spare here. I could rent that. Yeah, I could hire a. Bleh, you know, I want to do this, or I've got a free hour. I could, I could go and help out downstairs. At the, you know, where they yeah. building a construction thing or something. I'll help fucking pile up dirt or whatever, or dig a hole. You'll get a notification on Air Tasker just saying, "Yeah, we need help at the crematorium." You'll be like, "Right, I'll get down." <laughs> Okay. Put on your gas mask and yeah. just go down for a few hours. On is a this in, is this in a pandemic world or is just this, just the future just, gulag? Like you know, yeah. just the dystopian. <laughs> right, I'm sorry. Yeah, like they'll just be a crematorium. The where you'll you're do going a shift to yeah, I'm to just make some extra money. Trying to picture the future in my mind, building the world where you're um doing Uber cr crematorium, <laughs> where you're like, I'm Uber, I'm, I'm Uber crematorium tonight because you know there's Uber Eats. Yeah, yeah. Uber Uber crematorium. Do an Uber crematorium. <laughs> but yeah, we're doing a few cremations <laughs> because of the new virus. <laughs> people are actually choking on the fumes. We're cremating so many people. There's people dying from the secondhand smoke that are nearby. <laughs> it's giving people who live nearby oh, emphysema fuck. from You're the right. chimney. <laughs> oh, Uber crematorium. I think that's what it'll be. And you'll get banned from Uber crematorium for, you know, saying that it didn't. They didn't burn your granddad or whatever. <laughs> you, like, you know, when you click the missing items, you'll click the thing like the urn didn't show up. Yeah. <laughs> They'll bring the urn of your granddad's yeah. ashes on a menu log backpack. Right. And I got like, an Uber, Uber crematorium. Fucking half his ashes were gone. The ashes were gone. Refund. You know, it'll do it yeah. automatically. Next crematorium's free. Then you'll get Next banned. Next person I get cremated, I want free. Yeah. You get a free cremation. Mm. And then you'll get banned, but you won't be able to get regular Uber as well because mm. it's connected. Mm. So That'll be all recycled food in this dystopian. Yeah. Um, I think the future gulags, they won't have barbed wire like the Soviet Union ones. Right. They'll be like genius bars where you kind of are into it a bit. Well, that's kind of the way. That's like Brave New World. Yeah. Where it's like you're into it because there's no reason not to be on your phone all the time, eating crappy food all the time because it's it's like accepted, but it, it, it's like a prison as well. Yeah. Psychologically or whatever. But you'll be, yeah, you'll log into your prison cell with the barcode on your neck. Willingly. <laughs> willingly, voluntarily. And it'll make the same sound as the lime scooter getting activated. Just dun, bum, dun, bum, dun, bum, dun. Bum. Yeah. You'll go in. <laughs> you'll get to rate your experience in the... In gulag. the gulag. Yeah. Apple's gulag. I'm on the fence about wellness, to be honest, because I have this, I have this constant, not that this is related to gulags, but I have this constant battle where, cause I'm into it, like in the health aspect of it. Oh yeah. yeah. But, um, cause I think like, I would say that your diet 
can probably cure 90 like i reckon 90 percent of people have a bad diet myself included yeah like like i think it's really difficult to eat well like i think if you ate well you could cure 90 percent of diseases probably if you ate the right foods consistently yeah i believe that yeah you would not 90 percent, but you wouldn't be able to cure aids yeah that's the one thing that I've tried to cure with dietary <laughs> changes, but yeah, it just the pharmaceutical narrowly, yeah, outweighs it. Yeah, it's funny to think of a wellness guy trying to get AIDS just to see if he can cure it. You know, they do that where they're like, guys put on weight or get sick, yeah, so they can they can prove that their wellness things. I've seen that. I've seen that with diabetes. This guy just spent two weeks getting diabetes, which was the fun part. I think. Yeah. And then two weeks getting out of it. And he did? Yeah. Fucking hell. So for two weeks, he just ate like meat pies and like stuff from servo stations. Oh my God. And then he went full health for the second two weeks and completely reversed it. That's remarkable. That's kind of what I was trying to say. Yeah. It's a bit, but AIDS, I, get, I mean, to picture a wellness guy doing that, I'm going to get diabetes and then I'm going to prove through a slim diet of refined... Uh, uh, oils and uh, grass-fed steak and and fruit, I can reverse the effects. But it's different when you're thinking about, that's diabetes, but different when it's AIDS. Yeah. So I kind of go into this gay brothel and get fucked up the ass by as many men as possible to, yeah. contra- <laughs> to contract AIDS. Yeah, I'm going to do <laughs> Tibetan, Tibetan throat gargling to get an <laughs> erection against my own will. <laughs> Because he's not gay. Yeah, he's, he's just, not gay, right. He just, yeah. He's straight, but he's trying to get AIDS. In order to get an erection, I had to uh, masturbate in public. <laughs> I, had to, I had to meditate to get an, an erection, to have sex with this man, to contract AIDS. And uh, it, it turns out juicing, it isn't effective. Yeah. <laughs> it turns out juicing didn't cure my AIDS. But I think that is the one where you can't. Yeah, I reckon, yeah. It, it just didn't Mag- Magic Johnson, the basketball get AIDS and then sort of basically cure it. I think or live with it with with no minimal effect. Well, now the the head of the World Health Organization said that he would rather get AIDS than diabetes because of how good we've gotten at living with it. Yeah, no one even asked him a question; he just said it. <laughs> it sounds <laughs> like, like it you... wasn't one of those ones. Which one would you rather? He was like, "Yeah, I'd rather get," because he said that. Diabetes just, it, it affects all your systems, whereas now with AIDS, you can take a drug that stops it from even being present in your system. Jesus. And just, it's a very simple thing now. Is it expensive, this drug? I don't know the exact price. <laughs> Off by just heart. asking for a friend. No, it's very cheap and reasonable. It's very cheap and reasonable. I suggest getting on it as a prophylactic. But yeah... <laughs> <laughs> it's funny how uh today when we went to the cafe the guy was like um um are you enjoying this bean yeah that's what he said when he gave you his coffee they gave you the coffee well i said i'll get another coffee he goes same bean fuck no once you're calling coffee beans like mm. another guy was like yeah i've been working with these beans for a while there's just something about it that seems- i just find that too detailed for coffee that's what it is. It's like, this is too much. You know what it's I mean? It's jargon, eh? Mm. Don't you think it's, it's, it's inside baseball? I think it's baseball? a weird um, <clears throat> love affair with uh, with coffee and, and inanimate objects. C- c- yes. It's kind of like um, just people's obsession with coffee and loving the bean and all this and like romanticizing it. It reminds me of those people that fuck cars and stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's like people, like I saw a documentary on a woman that fell in love with a Ferris wheel. Yeah. Well, there's something wrong in the brain where they're like... <laughs> their brain thinks an exhaust pipe is a pussy. But it's yeah. like it's like a genetic thing. Yeah, they, their like brain the is wide where they're like, yeah. damn, look at that car's a... Like it thinks the, the boot is like an ass. Yeah, yeah. It's like, look at that ass. Like it's getting the same thing we see where you see a naked woman... <laughs> It's like looking at a muffler going, man, she's got a nice pussy. Yeah, the yeah. Muffler. That's like the bean guy. Mm. Like you just see a cup of coffee, but he's like, these yeah. are beans. It's made sticking, up of beans. He's sticking beans. Well, yeah, those grinded up. Do you want to grind it up beans or, or mm. just whole seed? <laughs> 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 but I mean, I imagine. <laughs> do you want multi-grain? But, but I, yeah, yeah I've, I, like none of my 
people that I know, none of the acquaintances in my life or anything would, would ever refer to coffee as beans. Right. They wouldn't like, go like, are you enjoying that bean? Yeah. Do you know anyone in your life? That no, would say I'm, that? I'm glad to say I don't. There's something about baristas that just doesn't gel with me. It's kind of like the beers, the beer people, you know, the beer people yes, are like, this it, is a hoppy, fruity, you know, I pref- and they're like doing it like a fine wine or a whiskey. I think beer nerds are worse than wine nerds because what, and they're worse than coffee nerds because beer is beer had no pretentiousness to it. Right. They imported the pretentiousness. I think that's what you're getting it. at the core of it. Yeah. Which is that it's, it's, um, uh, bringing pretension into something that's meant to be mundane. Yeah. Whereas wine and whiskey was always about flavor and taste and rituals around exploring. Snobbery and yeah, snobbery. Quaffing or whatever. They yeah. Mean. Quaffing. Is that what it's called? Quaffing when they... You know, Smell, when they, yeah. yeah. Exactly. It always was built into the terminology and the architecture of it. Right. From the beginning. But beer was meant to be a working class. It was meant to be about glassing someone and yeah. just getting... You were meant to like drink your beer, go out into the street and kick someone in the gutter. <laughs> Because you thought they looked at you wrong. You know yeah. what I mean? That were the good old days when you just find someone and go, what the fuck did you say, cunt? Yeah. And then you grab them by the hair and drag them down the street. <laughs> and then Trevor, look at Trevor and they'd kick him as well. And It was a communal, mm. you know. Yeah. But now it's like when you get the wizard's lager or whatever. Mm. That one of those wheelbarrow, you know. Yeah, yeah. And the guy's got the big beard and... Mm. But he's like being all aloof and shit. They'll be like rude to you and stuff. <laughs> Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like you'll yeah, be like, can yeah. I just get like the pale ale? They're like, which one? <laughs> you know, they do that. Yeah, yeah. Because you're like, whoa, I thought this was a beer thing. And they're like, yeah, but we've got the new Pacific pale ale that's like a fruity mango. or Like it's completely, do they do things like that with like, it's completely different yeah. to the Griffith. This Gryffindor. one has notes of mango. Yeah. I'll say something like that. And it's like, I'll give you a note of fucking elbow across the nose bridge, cunt. I don't know why it makes me so angry. <laughs> well, with the wine, even if the wine guy's like, well, this was a fine varietal note with a, you know, it's, mm. a, it's light on the land or whatever. It's like, <laughs> it smells like the for- the flavors of the forest floor. Yeah, this is more of a kind of evocative of the forest. You're not like you do. You know what I mean? There's mm. no. It doesn't make you feel annoyed. No, because you walked in to that game. Yeah, it's when they change the rules of the game. He's bringing the game to you at the pub. Yeah, he's going like he's bringing that that beer game, and it's like I don't want to partake in your weird world that you've created where you're suddenly powerful. It's, it's and like, they're bringing like World of War, sorry, uh, Warhammer energy right. to beer. Yeah. <laughs> like they look like the guys at the Warhammer thing painting figurines of orcs. What the fuck is Warhammer? It's basically just you, you paint figurines and then battle other people. Jesus. It's like medieval reenactment, but you just, you outsource it to painted figurines. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking bizarre. Yeah. But he's bringing that nerd level to beer. And it's the same with coffee. I saw a barista in Ben and you, he was on TV saying how he invented a new way of doing coffee where you pour it over a, a thing of ice or something, a shot, and it does something to the f- aromas. And it just made me really angry. It, well, yeah, it's because I have an order that pisses them off too. What do you do? Because it's like sacrilegious or whatever, what I'm doing. What are you doing? Well, I drink a liter of wheat cappuccino a day. So, <laughs> yeah, so nurse, I, you I nurse drink that week three large, three yeah. large week. So I get a half shot instead of two, and just drink a liter of it. Right, so three mugs of it. Right, so you really want that that milk? It's the milk. Is it's that a what you're after? To drink milk and eat chocolate. <laughs> but because it's through a drink, you gaslight yourself into thinking, "No, I just had a drink of coffee. Like it's good. It's yeah. It's not just chocolate and milk making me fat. Yeah, exactly." Clogging your arteries you just, or whatever. And I think they hate an order like that because it's like, do you know what I mean? It's, mm. I remember, um, uh, like, yeah, I, I was ordering a coffee for a friend and they, they had, their order was decaf latte with honey. And it just upset the barista. Why did it upset him? Because it's decaf. It's not only is it decaf, but it's a latte with honey. Like, do you know what I mean? It's mm. you don't do that. 
I think it's like that Sounds thing of nice. said death before decaf. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, it's like that thing of. Yeah, it's like the, it's the most obnoxious drug in the plan on the planet, man. Like caffeine is a serious drug. You oh. don't see fucking heroin addicts going like, "Don't talk to me before I've had my heroin." I get grumpy. Yeah, people are so eh, about it. Well, I think like you drink like an energy drink, like Prime or whatever. Mm. It'd be like doing meth. It'd be the same feeling. Yeah, if you drank like three Red Bulls quickly, I reckon. Yeah, it's like there there is an arms race with energy drinks where they're just yeah. getting stronger and bigger. Nobody's really. There was a time when the news would get on it and go like, "These energy drinks bad for kids." Now it's like, let's unleash it. Yep. There's bigger issues. The war in the Ukraine. No one's going to care about energy. One drinks. of them was called. It had was Prime. It had the subtitle "Unleash Your Inner Beast." And I was like, I think the beast has already been unleashed. <laughs> you know, like yeah, yeah. before. Mm. Drinking this, and mm. there was one called Relentless, and I was like, "Finally, a beverage named after capitalism." <laughs> yeah, it's like fun. Relentless. That's the name. That reminds drink. me of when I saw a dude drinking one of those Mother Energy drinks in Melbourne on the tram with the Bluetooth speaker. Yeah, just dancing with the speaker blaring on the public transport. Everyone else is trying to, you know. Yeah, Relentless. They should have a pie chart on the back of the monster to tell you the energy distribution of where it's gone. Like, you know, like a little just circle with like where the energy goes. It'd be like just disrupting people's commute. <laughs> right, I would see. Would be like most of the pie chart. Right, it wouldn't be like studying. Starting a startup. Yeah. Or whatever. Yeah, investing in, in charity. Running a The energy's business. going to disruption. Um, Coward punches and yeah. assault. <laughs> <laughs> like just a like, pie chart. Because yeah. I think monster should foot the bill for some of that damage that they've unleashed <laughs> on society like just send them an invoice you think he's, they're giving the wrong people energy yeah and they should get do you know what i mean it's like when that purdue farmer or whatever that the sackler family mm. they're now paying the price of the opioid epidemic right because they ravaged all these communities right but this when is, when's monster yeah. going to be taken to the criminal court right yeah as they should you know, the CEO of Monster Energy Incorporated. Mm. There's a lot. <laughs> Whoever the, imagine if he's just like a dude with a Bluetooth speaker turned up to meetings going, fucking, fuck yeah. You know, they do that. They're, fuck yeah. Yeah. He's like, like, fuck yeah, can't I'll headbutt you. Yeah. He's yeah. like, that's the CEO. He mm. started it. As a chief financial officer, I think that these investments into obtaining our ingredients in, in, in direct, fucking shut up, cunt. I'll kill do, you. Do, 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 in the courtroom, do, do, they're like, Mr. Yeah. Speaker. <laughs> the gavel. like. Yeah. He, but yeah, I, I feel like whoever designed the logo of putting a skeleton on as the logo for mm. one of these energy drinks right. should be indicted. Right. Like I putting see. a skeleton on as a logo. Do you know what I mean? It's mm. very... You think that it's, 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 it's confronting it, and like... It's confronting. It says a lot about the drink. Well, yeah, there's you a skeleton on the can. You shouldn't be drinking a drink with a skeleton on the front. It's like how the Nazi SS had skull and crossbones. Yeah, on their on their things, on their and everyone's like, "Geez, I wonder if they're going to be up to something bad." So, yeah. what do you recommend? They've got lightning bolts and skulls and crossbones on their hat, much like the energy drinks of today. Mm. They're the Which equivalent have of lightning the... bolts, skulls, and crossbones. Yeah, and... same thing. Yeah, so I think similar. And the Nazis were on meth too. They were. Yeah, which is their monster. They invented meth, I think, because because there was reports where they were like, uh, "Nazis, Nazis invaded Europe on a super drug." Yeah, and then they. I just watched this recently. I've been going through a real Nazi phase. <laughs> that sounds a bit my early anyway. period. <laughs> um, watching Nazi stuff, but yeah, he they um, the Europe was like, "What the fuck? The Nazis just invaded France in three days. Are they on a super drug?" Because in order to do what they did, they had to stay awake for three days. Right, yeah. Which is real meth behavior to invade a country. Um, and uh, yeah, some guy pilot crashed or something and they went through his kit and they found this drug in capsules, like a lolly fucking lifesaver, like, you know, those like, like a, you know, pack of lollies, but then he's had like danger. This is when to use this drug and yeah, instructions and stuff. And that's okay, how they discovered it. that. That the Nazis were had yeah, were giving their soldiers methamphetamines. Wow. Yeah. 
Yeah. Best dressed meth addicts in fucking history. Yeah, the the, the to keep up that aesthetic level. Mm. Well Just, addled. Yeah. Yeah. Strange mixture. Oh, the thing that pisses me off the most about food. I had a weird incident recently in a takeaway thing where I tried to play a prank. I didn't try to do a prank. I called up an Indian restaurant that I frequent and I was trying to impress a mate <clears throat> who was listening to the call and I tried to do like I went uh, yeah, mate, can I get a buttered chicken, naan bread, lick the pussy, and, um, you know, just uh, some birani? Like, as a joke, yeah, like yeah, I was yeah. looking at my mate when I said it. This dude's like, no, what'd you say? What did you say? And I said, oh, I said, um, buttered chicken. He's like, no, 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 you said after. I said, buttered chicken, birani, naan bread. He's like, no, before that, you said it, you said the pussy. Don't lick the pussy. Don't just say this to me, you fuck. And got really angry. He's like, no, no, I won't. No. And hung up. And because my mates were like, I got kind of embarrassed because I'm like, fuck, I've got to finish this order. So I, oh, I you're hungry as well. Yeah. Well, I didn't want to be like the dude who ruined dinner because I said lick the pussy or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As a joke, trying to be funny. And um, then I, uh, I called back and I had put on an accent. Yeah. Where I was like, yeah, g'day, mate. Yeah, it's, yeah, Darren here. Yeah, listen, um, yeah, so could I pretend to be someone else? This is 100% true. With the same order, though? Yeah, I had the same order. I couldn't change the order. So I was like, yeah, buttered chicken, naan bread. He's like, you called before about the pussy. You could have, she said the pussy, you fuck. You said the pussy, you licked the pussy. No. And I was like, nah, mate, what are you talking about? And he's like, no, I know you are. He's you. And I was like, nah, man, what the fuck? Nah, mate, you, you got the wrong guy. He's like, no, you wait. And he like pressed pause on the call or whatever and went somewhere. I guess he looked at the call log and came back and went, no, you called before, fuck you. That's unbelievable. It's not a very good Indian accent, but yeah. That, but I, I, I think it's funny because it's almost like you're thinking, well, probably all white people just order butter chicken naan, so it won't seem suspicious. Yeah. I was if like, I oh, it's just a coincidence. So then I called back a third time and I was like, look, man, please let me order. I'm really sorry. And then he did that. You know, the thing that takeaway owners always do with are like, listen, it's all, listen, you can't be doing, you can't be saying lick the pussy. We work very hard here. You can't be saying lick the pussy here, my friend. You cannot. Yeah. It please brother. <laughs> <laughs> like it shifts. It's the tonal shift. Yeah, the tonal shift. Like I know that it's like when you've had a, he a wanted fight to make with amends. someone, they ever, someone goes crazy, mm. and then after they kind of go, "Look, I was a little out of order myself." <laughs> you know, you were a little out of order yourself. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it gets heated, and then it, oh, yeah. It's gen now. It's like you could be friends for life. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I heard that as a quote. Like, if you start off as enemies, you could like he could be your best friend because you've been through so much. Yeah. He's like, remember, lick the pussy. Yeah, no, yeah. Good Next time come in. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like yeah, you're bonded. Yeah. Whereas if you'd started like mm. good friends, friends, friends and then, and then did the little pussy, it's, yeah. it's over. Because like, why? Never again. Why have you done this? Never again. Never again. Never again will you be allowed. Whereas I came in and got the butter chicken. He's like, I told your brother you can't be doing silly, okay? Sorry, brother, but you can't be doing this. I'm like, look, man, I'm really sorry. Same. It the, it must have been. It must be great cuisine it is to, good. to overwhelm you know what i mean to go in because it's stressful i had to go in because i promised everyone i'd order the food but um yeah uh he took real offense to it because it was just a smart ass thing to do but a lot yeah. of cultures don't understand understand is the wrong word a lot of cultures don't like the australian smart ass shit like americans are like that man they're very straight thank you sir they call you sir they're like, sir, absolutely, absolutely. They're really well mannered, really respectful Americans. Yeah, but they don't get the Aussie smart ass. Yeah, because they're a bit like, you know. You think Americans? They think it's disrespectful. More polite. I, I think Americans are really overtly polite and nice. I think we don't think that because of movies and shit. Because we see, yeah, 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 these bizarre characters and heightened. But like Americans, I found are really polite and respectful. Yeah, they don't do the like Australian thing where we ne we negative like we'll we'll like someone and go oh fucking we'll give them shit. Yeah, right. Which is kind of like what I was doing on the phone to that guy. 
it's that kind of thing of going like, oh, yeah, you didn't quite get that, did you, mate? Or something like that. Like yeah, some yeah. comment. And Americans don't, don't. I'm not saying all of them, but like I, I think generally speaking, they're not as into that shit. Well, I'm looking forward. Like, to what get, did you say? I'm looking forward to getting Neuralink to just work out whether it's it's genuine banter or disrespect. <laughs> like it'll be able to decode the brain waves and it'll right. be like you've been disrespected. Like it'll tell you <laughs> that yeah. you've been emasculated by twenty points or whatever. Twenty points of emasculation. It would remove a lot of the grey area having a chip in your brain that can measure your emotions and make. A dis- like make an assessment for you? Yeah, yeah. Because it's, it's quite hard to work out how much you've been disrespected and to apportion the right amount of fuck off energy to it. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's like, should I take it or... It's hard, isn't it? Because you don't want to be like, oh, fuck you, man. I didn't like what you said there. And everyone go, whoa, dude, yeah. chill out. Because I've tried that where you go, <laughs> yeah, you, you don't calibrate properly. <laughs> it's like breaking a safe. Yeah. Like getting the number right mm. to open... Yeah, you don't want someone to go, yeah, I think Rathy's had enough to earn too many beers. And you go, what the fuck did you say? Do you think I've got an alcoholic problem? Yeah. Yeah. That's why I don't think I could be in the mafia because there's so much breaking balls. Mm. He's breaking your balls. But you've got to do it the right amount. Mm. Otherwise you get killed. So it's like this knife edge. Yeah. You're like walking a tightrope between needing to bond with your colleagues Mm. and also not get whacked. Not get whacked. Like, isn't that stressful? That would be stressful. Like the yeah. back and forth in the mafia thing. Yeah. Everyone's chilling like, Gabo, you know, I'll get the bar bar. Yeah. And you're like, yeah, I think you fucking, <laughs> that shirt makes you look fat. Even fatter, fat. <laughs> Tony, fat Tony, you, you fucking, fucking fat, fat shit. <laughs> and they just shoot you in the head. You know, yeah, like, yeah. Cause, cause maybe that could be the best. Like, Fuck on this guy. Yeah, this guy doesn't give a shit. We love that. Yeah. That's it. Like, do you know what I mean? Like maybe if you were like, no, no you're a great guy. Like, well, you're fucking, I mean, I'm, yeah. This guy, you're for nook, eh? Hey? Yeah, you're yeah. trying to suck up to me, yeah. Like, so you, yeah. you're on a tight... Ro- you're not yeah. relaxed. You wouldn't be relaxed in the mafia. I don't think the mafia is a good place for someone who takes everything literally. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think the mafia is a good place, yeah. I, I think sure. the mafia is a neurotypical organization. Yeah. There's not many people going, but you said that you were coming. <laughs> <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? There's yeah, not many yeah. like Mark Cuckerbergs in the mafia. Like, right. but it's because of the system. Right, it's right. It's very much like, whoa. Oh, hey. Yeah, way. And then, bang, 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 bang. Yeah. Bang. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think it'd be a tough place for for an autist. To someone thrive. who's autistic. Yeah. yeah. To it'd be a good movie if like, you had the commitment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just an yeah, if you try and spin it as a diversity thing, where it's like they're Italians and an autistic guy, and he's not Italian, but they let him join. Yeah, he's part of the neurodiversity quota. Mm. He joins. Hey, the mafia. Danny boy, you fucking cock. Eh, you're a piece of shit. You're for no. Come here. You go up. Why have you disrespected me? <laughs> <laughs> like you don't get that. You as take a joke. it literally. Yeah, like, but why have you chosen me as the person mm. who's the subject of your scorn for today? <laughs> like I just think it's inappropriate considering that I am working mm. Mm. on a strange rate here pay wise and mm. there seems to be some inconsistencies with your pay Tony I want direct debit into the account right in <laughs> <laughs> right in yeah balls deep in that account <laughs> Yeah, I think you've got to kind of have that weird... There's some people I envy like that. They're really good at just going in and going, nah, that's what... Oh, is that yours? Is it... Oh, you know those people? Yeah. They you, point out everything. They go, oh, mm. do you bring your Where lunch to work? they have a bit work? of a laugh, yeah. You know what I mean? I could never think on those terms. Like, just... Bit of banter. Banter. Like, I, I'm like the cafe I went to, it goes, coffee, breakfast, banter. Was the third one? I'm like, can we get just the first two? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, you know, Coke Zero. Like, what about Banter Zero? Like, it's yeah. no, no banter included. Or whatever. Right, I see. Yeah, no banter. Yeah, all the other good stuff, but no banter. What about gentle back and forth of conversation? <laughs> <laughs> I like the, the gentle. It's <laughs> just so, so fragile. You're like, just gentle, what gentle about? conversation. So it doesn't even get into any territory that could might you, be get a gentle chin wag going. yeah <laughs> like i i'd like coffee breakfast gentle chin wag if you're interested yeah no like i agree to a gentle chin wag. i don't want to have to decipher a banter yeah if someone goes yeah well you would say that wouldn't you it's like what does that mean 
I'm going to have to go yeah. home and think about that now. Yeah, you've put... This is a lot of... I'm going to have to think about what this means. Like, I don't want a band here. I just wanted to try your beans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just wanted to see what you were doing with your beans these yeah. days. What are you doing with your beans these days? I want That's to start saying beans now. Yeah, you could start that conversation with the barista. What are you doing with your beans? And he'll be like roasting... At this time, ordered in from la da da, like they'd answer that. Oh, they'd love it. Mm. When someone knows the lingo. Hey, what are you doing with your beans? Yeah. How long have you been working with these beans for? Yeah. You, oh. <laughs> when, I, when he said I've been working with these beans for a while, I, for a minute, just thought of like they're just a bunch of Mr. Beans in the back. Yeah, right. Just in the kitchen. Like, I've been working with these beans. There's like yeah. 20 Mr. Beans. Yeah, and they're all a disaster and they're dropping the food and I don't know what's going on. I thought if I attached a GoPro to my head and filmed my life as a documentary, it'd be a horror movie. <laughs> <laughs> what was that got to do with it? I don't know. Like, I was just thinking of Mr. Bean. Like, people had watched it and be like, why is he putting a knife in a toaster? He's done that before. <laughs> Wait, so so it, it, this is a movie where we attach a GoPro to your head. But it's just for your life. Right. And your life would be like Mr. Bean, but he sticks a knife in a toaster? It'd be like if Mr. Bean was a horror movie. <laughs> like, yeah, like a dark, Like yeah. the Blair Witch Project. Yeah. Like just <laughs> <laughs> That's what your life would be like. <laughs> just like, you know, <laughs> just locking yourself out of the house and screaming and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> like people would be watching it and going, not like that. <laughs> Such a strange kind of boring, but really like, you know, upsetting documentary. Yeah. It'd be, as they say, war is like large stretches of boredom punctuated by sheer terror. What if that was your gravestone, Dan Rath? Large periods of boredom <laughs> punctuated by moments of utter terror. That'd actually be a good tombstone, right? Mm. Fuck, sums it up. Especially near the end when I had to get my colon removed. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? I don't know. Oh, shit. That's um, hilarious. I just, but I was thinking, because I was thinking of like the Matrix and stuff, like mm. how, you know, how the simulation, like mm. how he gives him the blue pill and the red pill or whatever. Oh, yeah. I love this idea that you were saying about <coughs> what if it was reversed? Yes. Like what if this is the real world and, yeah. and, 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 um, Morpheus is just a, uh, a really fucked up. Like a magician. Yeah. Magician, pedophile, Hypno like <laughs> it doesn't have to be a pedophile. But it's kind of <laughs> funny to think of Morpheus as a pedophile. <laughs> with those glasses and shit like there's this weird aspect to his personality i don't understand well they transitioned didn't they the glasses yeah then, like they went they were clear <laughs> but yeah. yeah um i i think yeah if he was just like because you know the guys eating the steak going mm. and then they're eating the shitty porridge yeah they're eating the porridge in the real world and then in yeah. the simulation where we all live yeah. everyone's living a normal life but then they get disconnected from the matrix and they realize that the real world's dead yeah machines killed it they live underground i just think it'd be funny if morpheus was just like just 10 years in was just like to neo just like yes yeah, psych this is this is this is this is the yeah. fake world this, this is, is just a warehouse music. this whole what's it yeah. called the thing underground it's zion yeah this is just a warehouse we've repurposed to fuck with you for 10 years yeah so all i've done is the red <laughs> pill is it the red pill you take that you go yes, into, yeah, 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 the red pill is just a roofie. Yeah, yeah. Like what happened was you're in a real world. Yeah. And then I roofied you and moved you into a warehouse. <laughs> <laughs> and gaslit you for 10 years. Yeah, saying that this is like Zion. I've just wasted your time. It's just a converted and warehouse. And I raped you a few Maritel. times too. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> like he just throws yeah, that yeah, in. Yeah, he's he's like, like, <laughs> was that yeah. necessary? He's yeah. like, no. No, none of this is necessary. It just helped. It was fun. Yeah. Believability. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> mate, yeah, it's like mate, yeah, I just hired these yeah. people off air tasker. It does like seem like something a magician would do, isn't it? Yeah, especially the sexual assault. Yeah, totally. Set up a fake reality, drug people. It's all very magician behaviour. Morpheus is like, yeah, I'm a gay rapist. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> and there is no simulation. There's nothing. It's just my warehouse that I converted to yeah. make it look like a an underground. No, the real world is that one where you eat steak and go yeah. to the movie. Like, yeah, that was awesome. That was awesome. Before this, I was a gay rapist. Why were you here? Yeah, I just tricked you. Suck shit. Do I get to leave? Of course like, not. Why did you enter? Why did you click on that encrypted link when yeah. you're, a, you're you're a program and now you're behind ten years? Yeah, you're not going to catch up. Like and, tech moves um, fast. Yeah, and the cops can't find you, mate. <laughs> They'll never find you. You still got the glasses and the jacket and all that kung fu training was just a bit of. We were all laughing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All, you don't need it. This is a G up, mm. mate. Suck shit. <laughs> Just to let you know, this has been a G up. Yeah, yeah. I'm a gay rapist. <laughs> oh, I don't know shit. why that is. I don't know. It's just a strange detail for him to be a pedophile or a gay rapist. <laughs> but yeah, I, I just think it'd be funny because <laughs> it's, just, it's just such a commitment to mm. go to Zion because it's such a shithole as a place. Like there's no rock climbing bars or <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not like there's yeah, no you can't. It's the human race surviving in the core of the earth. Like on Zion, there's no like, you know what I mean? There's no like you can't no, go to the shops and yeah, it's survival. Yeah, in so in in, in a deep you underground. You spent a decade there fucking around. Yeah, yeah but it's just like yeah, <laughs> a magician who's and a bunch of guys he hired off Airtasker to pretend. That yeah, he... and it's just a weird like Truman Show kind of <laughs> weird like bunker he's built. <laughs> To house people illegally that he assaults. I think you'd be pretty cut. You'd be like, fuck, man. Yeah, yeah. It's mm. the worst prank show I've ever heard of, mm. really. The Matrix. What is it? Reloaded. What could it be? Matrix. Matrix revealed. It's a G up. Yeah. <laughs> Matrix, it's a G up. <laughs> Matrix, it's a G up. Matrix psych. Mm. Not real. Hashtag. Bracket. Bracket, you've been bullshitted by a master. <laughs> a master magician. You've been bullshitted by a master magician. A peek behind the wizard's G-string. <laughs> <laughs> so Morpheus is a wizard in this analogy? Well, he's a wizard or a magician. I guess, mm. what's the difference? Because you think wizards are cool. Yeah. And then magicians aren't. But yeah. they're the same thing. It's just if magic was real, you'd be a wizard, right? Yeah. I guess Gandalf is a magician in some respects. But he's a legend as mm. well. Mm. Yeah. Like, you don't think, fuck, what a, what <laughs> what a, a pedophile. What a <laughs> <laughs> Gandalf. Like, Gandalf, you, don't, you can't imagine him on a cruise ship, you know? Like, yeah. making balloon animals. <laughs> <laughs> and up next, we have Gandalf doing up-close wizardry. Yeah. 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 You know, so mm. it's getting to the buffet and going, you shall not pass so he can eat it himself or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you You've shall got... not pass gas after this <laughs> meal. <laughs> because it's so bad. It's so <laughs> it's, processed. Yeah. It's high fructose. I will go corn to the... syrup. Yeah. <laughs> Slurp. <laughs> the buffet at a... A, a cruise ship is high fructose corn syrup, is it? <laughs> You slurp it with a curly straw, just fucking out of the trough. Off. I'm going to work on my biceps in the gym. <laughs> in the gym on the, on the Pacific He's Jewel. Dead lifting. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get ripped so I can attract more lovers. <clears throat> well, yeah. Then there's a dwarf in the show too. Yeah. What show is this? It's the, the cruise ship. Oh, show. the cruise ship. Right. The like live it's, show it's the where Gandalf is a magician and there's a dwarf. He summons a dwarf. From yeah. Narnia like a smoke thing and yeah. a cape but it's just Gandalf on a cruise <laughs> with the dwarf <laughs> working for the ma magicians whatever that means anyway uh, we should wrap it up I think we've been talking for a long time um I'd just like to say thanks for listening oh yeah oh thank you thank you and goodbye <laughs>